Okay, this thing. I guess what I'm trying to understand about this thing, there's about 50 layers in here, and nobody yeah. understands any of it. Yeah. It's sort of the way I feel about it. I mean, I don't... Everybody's all over the retailers for high prices, and they're the cause of all the grief. Yep. And you and I have never said that. They are a huge contributing factor, obviously. Yep. To the price increases. Yeah. But the supply chain is a fucking disaster. Yeah. Which is causing most of the issues. So yeah. you've got issues right from source. Transport is a huge problem. Yeah. Massive problem that nobody talks about. Yeah. Then you have the pressure of large retailers being able to charge what they want because there's just not a lot of competition in this country that is I, I, that i understand <laughs> this other shit where are you going with this kenny well i'm where trying to understand this? this code of conduct thing that we're doing like so, what do you think we tell so, so you're not gonna you're gonna try to control all their fees like what's the code of conduct so so here's here's my okay so we can come back to the code of conduct thing i think where and maybe they're just really good at this uh, or Maybe they just don't realize that there's the source of the problem. But in every situation that you've talked about, we have a government problem on every level, right? 100%. So, so you look at you look at gasoline and what's happening, you know, with with <coughs> gasoline costs. There is a large government tariff on gasoline that shouldn't be in there, right? That you could right. that the government could give us relief on that would they could they could just change. say shipping companies, you can't do this. You can't well, charge. No, no, you but, can't but, go mental. On yeah, you can't stuff. go mental. Or we should we should take a little bit off what we charge for what we charge as a tariff on gasoline, right? Like because the government takes a good chunk of money on gasoline, right? They do that too. There's a few points so, there. There's a few things there, and then you right. kind of go. So if logistics is a big part of this, the government has a a hand in that pot. They should be right. they should be helping to cut that down. If you think of like if you think of cost of goods the long-term play which is one of your favorite topics is we need to get better suppliers we need to get people growing shit in the country 100 because that helps us with supply chain 100%. right it cuts costs it helps us keep things local it keeps food chain in our in our chain which the government right. can also affect right and then and then these the big three or big four grocers that own 60 or 70 percent of the market who approved those who approved all those acquisitions like that there's wasn't government me. in all of this right well, like it wasn't me you know? yeah i know so right. you kind of go look guys like so i i guess the as you were talking the absurdity i heard was this is the government trying to regulate an industry that they've caused issues in yeah but i but you're right you know? and even then i still was leading i'm reading what teeth do you have with this like what do what do you what do you think what do you think the problem i love this with government say what do you think the problem is is the problem that you have a, i don't a think public, they know what the problem is you know why you know what they have they have a public yeah. the public has gone crazy and really mad at all the big six retailers understanding that there's a whole back end that causes a lot of these price increases at the store level. Yep. Gas, shipping, all the cogs have gone up. Yep. The, the the fight that you and I have with big retail all the time is all the bullshit that they throw at brands. Yep. Massive listing fees, debits that come out of nowhere, fines for this, fines for that, fines yep. for this, fines for that. It's all that nonsense. What people don't understand is that the that those those are some massive issues of why you can't get stuff to shelf why you don't have a lot of diversity in large retail and where the independents can flourish and if consumers really had any sense in their head the small retailers aren't the expensive ones there are a lot of options shop small then stop supporting the big ones for every single thing you do but it's I, less expensive yeah. to shop elsewhere i guess i guess the thing is is like you what like like so kenny and i we don't we don't we're not really i mean you you can hear it from what we're talking about now but we're not big retail supporters we haven't been for a very long time, long time. um <laughs> i i won't even hide that 
where I made my money was selling to big retailers, right? So 100% that was I true. I worked for a large retailer. Um, I mean, we were still at least a little more local and a little yeah, less yeah, yeah. You, offensive. You, you probably did more good than more good than harm, and I probably sold to guys that did more harm than good. But whatever that is, the, what we're at now is, you know, like the consumers, the retailers have, the big retailers have their set of flaws. But in this case, I don't understand, like our government made this issue and now we're trying to regulate our own issues, right? Like they need to, they need to go back and take this apart, right? Like I, I think one of the things that, you know, Kenny and I were pretty quiet on, but you know, when the, when the big CEOs went to parliament, right? We, I, I don't know what was, I don't laughed. know what was, I was that more was a, angry was a joke. or, but I was, I was angry because our politicians had no idea what to ask, no. right? Like, you know, you know why having, they having the Jasmine parliament. Singh ask Galen Weston if he's going to answer all 2000 emails is really, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we were grilling him on. Like, you know, why did you ask him if a small brand, a small Canadian yeah. brand yeah. wants to go into the natural set? Why do yeah. they need to pay 15 to $25,000 per SKU for a listing? Why don't you ask him that? Like, That's where you're, those those you are know, roadblocks for small brands. How, how do you? Why can't you take a price increase when you know my cogs have gone up? Yeah, like why what, don't you take how, a hit on? Why the do you have to fill in twenty pages to get a cog? To get well, why do I have to give you my life conversation story? about a cog change? Exactly. And how can you move, tell right? me that yeah. well, labor doesn't count in that? Gas doesn't yeah. count in that. Yeah. What fucking planet do you live on? It all yeah. counts in that. Yeah. You know, like, but, but they didn't ask any of those things, right? Like, no. honestly, Jasmine Singh yelling at Galen Weston for so stupid. not wanting to answer 2000 consumer emails is really, it's not a thing, right? Like, it's just, it's not, it's definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it, um, it's honestly, it just drives me nuts when I read this stuff and then I do it and I read, you know, sorry, like industry publications that I don't understand where these people so, are. So. Uh, as usual, Kenny and I've rolled in hot, but what we're talking about is that there are quite a few headlines right now about um, an attempt to figure out how to regulate um, the relationship between um, a retailer and a supplier. Um, there's an industry, like a grocery code of conduct coming um, that they, I think they put, it seems like, they put a lot of work in for rules and fines and penalties and fair allocation of supply. Um, but there seems to be like, we, we didn't think about how we're going to enforce it or how membership and participation works yet. Because so I don't know why we built gonna, the code. Exactly. Without, what are you going to do with it? You know, so what are you going to tell everybody? To participate. Like, so if I'm a grocery store, why, why would I sign up for this? Well, I guess like my I, I point, don't, like, I don't even understand what you're asking me to do if I was a yeah. grocery store. Like, I, I don't, I don't understand what, like, why, why would I, in fair competition, why would I sign up for this, right? I like, don't know. You know, I mean, we, we should, like, we shouldn't be, you know, if, 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 if Weston and, and Save On, like Patterson and all those guys want to make money, I have no problem with that. That's fine. The problem we're having right now is a lot of the costs that are getting passed through the system are incurring because of all the all the all the fines and all those other costs for us to deal with them but yeah. then we can't increase the price we can't get yeah. in yeah and the only ones who could play then are all the large guys yeah you know what you want government policy you want to come and help help some small business out yeah right my i told you like if you walk my store and you have all my produce is cheaper than all listen, the majors listen you know you know all of them you know what like, and i'm running on lighter margin the one question that should have been asked of all the big guys, but you knew that politicians didn't know, why are they still charging listing fees? I don't know. Why? why? Like what 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 possible reason is there in this day and age to be charging a listing fee? Like so, you know, in the old days, if you wanted to make an argument that listen, this takes a lot of manpower, you know, we've got to get the SKU listed, we've got to get a slot open, blah, 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 whatever you want to like right. call a listing fee. The one thing that we don't have today is we don't have that complexity. It's a computer input. You know, the, the vendor does the work to fill in the sheet. You upload the sheet. Right. Where is I understand the, the store aspect. There? You know what that's called? You know? 
operations. Yeah. yeah. That's part of opening I a know. store. You can put the product on a shelf. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. So you think of it two ways just saying it, right? So if I were if we if you and I wanted to go to one of the large majors with three SKUs of the T, ninety thousand dollars. Well, the large one we because we yeah. may be able the to sneak guy the would be ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. We might get a deal and get it for forty five thousand okay. dollars. Yeah, okay. Like what do you yeah. think my product's gonna cost yeah. more? Yeah. I have to recoup that. I can't yeah. bury that. Where am I going to bury it? In yeah. The backyard? Yeah. I go pick what the money tree. Like it's well, well, listen, listen. Like okay, so if you're a politician and you're and you're you're wondering what this is, a listing fee basically is a charge the retailer levies so that you can get a product into their store, into their store distribution system. Doesn't mean that you know like doesn't even give you time. It doesn't give you time. It doesn't tell you how many stores you're in. It doesn't tell you anything. All it does is it's essentially the labor cost and the complexity cost of introducing a new product to the set. So if you are um, if you are a small brand, it is not insignificant to spend twenty to forty thousand dollars on a listing fee at one retailer. So you're talking about if I want to go to two major retailers, we're talking fifty grand for a skew for one oh one flavor. Like and then I, I've got to pay that right away. So I've got to pay that, you know, right away because retailers don't offer terms, right? But you know what? Like I will put in sales, which I'll put up the money for raw goods. I'll put up the money for manufacturing because that's my job. But once I sell it in to a major retailer, I don't get paid for 180 days. You know, like, so yeah. I've now got to float. I've got to pay for this 40, 45 grand and I've got to float you know, probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars in cost of goods, right? For another hundred and eighty days before I get paid, if there are no deductions, there are right. no other subtractions from the bill. Right. Like that is. So it hit a no, the other like way. None of those questions got asked, though, right? Like but, none but of that's, those. That's that's, that's a asked. massive cost. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a cogs problem. That's a cost that yeah. now the supplier bears, which means the yeah. consumer is going to bear because yeah. I can't. I got to get those costs. Correct. Back, Correct. Right. You want to plan another side. I book a time to get into Walmart, Superstore, wherever. doesn't matter who it is. And my driver, my company that I hired out to transport, gets there at 1105. And I get between a one and $10,000 fine, depending on who it is and on any given, on any given Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That the, the truck company doesn't pay. I pay as a supplier. Yeah. I wasn't late. Yeah. I don't drive trucks. And if I'm five minutes late, do you really think five minutes late is worth $10,000, $5,000, $1,000? Like you want, you want an issue? Look at the extortion portions of the business. Don't blame the retailers for high prices. Welcome to the world right now, guys. Take a look around. Supply chain's a problem. Fuel's a problem. Transport's a problem. Transport in, in, in its whole length is extortion. It's out of control. Prices of containers went through the roof. Pallets to move around. There's, there's, if, if the fines come, everything goes back to the supplier who doesn't drive the truck and didn't book the time and doesn't go to the lot. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. you look at all that nickel and diming and are big dimes and big nickels, that's a big problem in the cost of this. Next. Seriously, I did I just I don't understand how they first off, you know, government should stay the hell out of this because they, they caused the problem and they have no freaking clue what they're doing to fix this problem. Like zero. Help yeah. small business then. If you really want to do something, help a lot of the independents. Give us a chance to compete. As opposed to look, us look, look, sitting on little at, margins. Just take a look at market share, right? Like take a look at market share. 85, 90% is with six guys. Yeah, yeah. Like how how are you not? And and there's going to be more, right? Like we, we've already lost Jesus. some of our beloved chains along the way. Like granted, like I, you know what? I won't even get into whether they're doing a good or bad job, but we've lost some along the way. Um, even, you know, the last few years, like some, some that everybody has groaned about like TNT getting bought up or long goes been getting bought up, right? Like Buddy, there's, there's so a, few you know, independent so many, chains left. You know, so yeah. few. And the thing yeah. is you and I don't even have a hate for large retail. It's not my no, favorite thing. I would no. much rather support local hundred yeah. yeah. percent, but yeah. all the yigs, for example, the independent grocers that are, that are under law laws banners, they're all independent guys. They're all community guys. Yeah. I don't know if I'm supporting any of them. Yeah. Right. I know a lot of the save on guys. I, I don't have a problem with save on. Yeah. I, I shop their stores. Yeah. I shop super stores. I have to eat, right? I shop these places. I just can't stand that there's just seems to be 
it just, it, it's just, it just seems that, that you, to get into this game for any small supplier in this country is so hard because the big guys have so much power and they just don't let you play. And then you yeah. have all the little guys, and I participate in that side, who run on thin margins. I try to give deals all the time to, the, to our consumers, right? And then all the talk and all the support goes to large. Like you want government policy? Yeah. Get more small businesses running. Yeah, we've said it before. Yeah. Put more money into production, into yeah. manufacturing in Canada, growing in Canada. Like do the other things. Worrying about the code of conduct. I mean, what teeth is this stupid thing gonna have? Okay, guys, let's play nice in the same sandbox. Like nobody do things bad. Let's all be really good to each other. Really? I, I've That's never heard that voice from you. I've never heard that voice from you, but I kind of like that's it. My, that's my Tuesday morning agitated with <laughs> stupid, stupid articles <laughs> that make no sense. Um, so we're and mostly because I don't understand it. And I've gone through this and I live in this industry and I've read all this and I still don't understand what we're trying to accomplish. So, so this is our fast thought. Um, we came in hot. Um, hopefully it doesn't uh, kill anybody's buzz on, on Thursday, but uh, we are this this code of conduct thing, I don't think we understand it. Um, struggling to see how it's going to work. And then uh, I think more of this, it's almost that Phil. I don't understand how it's going to work. I, yeah. I, I really don't get it. So, so I think if, if you understand it, um, I'll come explain it to me. Yeah. Like chime in, chime in and, and, and we'll hook up so we can, yeah. we can explain it. If you're designing it and you, you think we've been unjust, um, we, we would love it if you came on um, to tell us. And if you're a retailer and you want to tell us off, you could do that too. We're, we're too. actually open to it. We're pretty. That's fine too. We've got pretty tough skin. So um, anyway, this is the fast thought. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.